find ourselves in Hurtgen Forest during mid-September 1944. While Montgomery was launching one of his most ambitious operations in Holland known as Market Garden, the Americans launched one of the fiercest and bloodiest battles on the Western Front further south. This battle would last for a total of four months, and would cause some 50,000 casualties in the U.S. Army. This caused the battle to become known to the Americans as the Meat Grinder, in a similar way to what had happened on the Eastern Front in the Rezef salient. Despite being as late as September 1944, in which Germany had just suffered heavy defeats on all fronts, the German army was still a very powerful fighting machine, and they were masters of both defense and attack. In addition, at this time they were already fighting on German soil, which gave him extra motivation. The American captain William Depew, who would become a general years later, was present in these combats and this was the opinion that years later he issued. When it came to defending, the Germans took portions of land to convert them into positions from the ones who could shoot in any direction. They knew how to cover and conceal themselves, as well as how to use their imaginations. A handful of Germans could take on a whole regiment just by embedding their weapons in the most suitable way. As for the attacks, the Germans mastered the art of putting out fires through the use of machine guns. The more they fired, the less ours did, and the more dangerous everything became, until our men finally stopped firing. Then we knew that the Germans were going to destroy our ranks, capture some soldiers or finish them off and completely defeat us. When the German front in Normandy finally collapsed in mid-August, the Allies became very excited and saw that the end of the war was near. Believing that their enemy was already defeated, and that the war would end before Christmas, the Allied commanders made a series of mistakes that would pay dearly. The Siegfried Line, which had been dismantled for the most part to build the Atlantic Wall, and the Rhine River, were going to be the last obstacles to enter Germany, but they soon saw that this advance was going to be much more difficult than they thought. The first German city to be attacked by the US Army was the city of Aachen, in which the German soldiers resisted forcefully for 20 days. At the same time that the battle for the city was taking place, the Americans continued to push further south, plunging deeper into the Hurtgen Forest. His intention was to penetrate the Siegfried Line as soon as possible, to then cross the Rhine River, and capture the Ruhr Basin as soon as possible, thereby completely sinking German industrial production. While Montgomery was trying to do this from the north, U.S. General Hodges was going to do it from the south. Another objective that the Americans had to advance quickly through this sector was to prevent the Germans from breaking a series of dams that would cause the entire area to be flooded. The Germans were amazed when they saw that their enemy plunged into this forest, knowing that it was a perfect area for defense where they could cause tens of thousands of casualties to the Americans. Walter Model was at that time the commander of Army Group B that protected that sector. There the German Marshal had established special defenses that would make the most of the characteristics of the terrain. Although the Americans initially had a 5 to 1 superiority, the veteran German soldiers held their own against Allied units, most of whom had just arrived as replacements. The Allied unit in charge of advancing through the region was the U.S. 1st Army, leaving its 5th and 7th Corps within the Hurtgen Forest. In total, some 14 infantry, armored and airborne divisions would fight in this battle that went on for months. The German force that initially defended the forest were two German divisions totaling about 10,000 troops, although as the weeks went by, other units arrived to reinforce the position. The first confrontation took place on September 19 when a U.S. infantry regiment entered the forest and was repulsed by the defenders. After this initial trial, two weeks later the rest of the U.S. 9th Infantry Division attacked the area in the direction of the city of Schmidt. After advancing only about 3 kilometers during 11 days of intense combat in which the unit suffered 4,500 casualties, the division had to be replaced, as it had been completely torn to pieces. One of the reasons why they had suffered so many casualties was because inside the forest they could hardly use tanks and the infantry had to advance without any type of protection. The next American attack would be carried out by its 28th Infantry Division, which had precisely replaced the 9th, beginning on November 2nd. The difference between this attack and the previous ones was that the Germans were fully prepared, having had plenty of time to reinforce the position. This time the Americans attacked from a broad front that practically extended through the entire forest. 
Although they were able to advance a few meters, these were at a very high cost and the offensive was quickly stopped. The Germans then counterattacked with all types of units including armor and recovered most of the lost territory, causing the American withdrawal. It was on November 8 when the Germans recaptured the town of Schmidt that this first phase of the battle ended, and it did so with a German defensive victory. The second phase of this fighting began a few days later, as part of a general offensive launched by the Americans to advance towards the Ruhr River, known as Operation Reina. The fighting took place from November 18 and lasted until December 16, this being the date on which the Battle of the Bulge began some 30 kilometers further south. This was the toughest phase of the battle in which, colloquially, the Americans put all the meat on the grill. Little by little they made their way at a very high cost in casualties, until on November 28 they managed to conquer the city of Hurtgen, which was located to the southeast of the forest. During the first days of December the American troops tried to continue advancing and were able to take new villages and hills from the forest, but their pace was so slow that they did not pose a serious danger to the Germans. Shortly before the fighting stopped due to the focus shifting to the Ardennes, the Germans were able to counterattack and take the important Hill 400, which they had lost days earlier. With this, they revalidated their defensive positions and the battle stalled until again in February 1945, the Allies resumed their advance. They finally forced their way through what remained of Hurtgen Forest in a week from February 10 to 17, meeting weak German resistance. The final count of casualties throws up a dramatic figure for the Americans, as it is estimated that they suffered a total of 55,000 casualties either directly or indirectly. To give us an idea of the magnitude of this series of battles, these 55,000 casualties are somewhat less than half of what the Americans suffered during the almost three months that the Battle of Normandy lasted. The Germans for their part suffered some 28,000 casualties, in which we also have to include an undetermined number of soldiers who were taken prisoner. Finally let's see the opinion of Professor Michael Howard, who after his fight against the Wehrmacht became a military historian. A few years after the end of the conflict he said the following. Until the war had reached a very advanced stage, those in charge of the British and American ground forces were well aware that if they were to meet German troops on anything approaching a level playing field, there was a good chance that his own troops suffered a resounding defeat. They were better than us, we can never stress this too much. Every Allied soldier who faced them knew this, and did not consider it humiliating. We were no more than amateurs, taken from peaceful industrial societies endowed with obvious cultural prejudices towards everything military, fighting against the best professionals of the moment. We made our way through Europe with as little finesse as possible and as many high explosives as possible. We have to point out that Professor Howard received a lot of criticism and personal attacks for these words of his, from former veteran soldiers who had another view in which they felt far superior to the Germans. However, he also received many letters from officers who had fought on the most critical points of the front and who supported his opinion. And so far this program about this bloody battle that undoubtedly reminds us of any episode of the First World War. Thank you all for being a part of this community, and especially the sponsors who make this possible. Subscribe and share this program if you liked it, and we'll see each other again here as always, next Thursday and Sunday. See you soon.